Let us now take the fifth model from simple interest and compound interest where we are going to discuss questions where the total amount for two different periods is given and we are supposed to find out the principal amount or the rate of interest. Let us have a look at the first question. On simple interest, a sum of money becomes rupees 1120 in four years and rupees 1360 in seven years. How much money was deposited? So as you can see here, the given case is for simple interest and it says a sum of money becomes 1120 in 4 years and 1360 in 7 years. As I have already mentioned in one of the previous questions, whenever the term becomes is used, we always refer to the total amount. So very clearly, this 1120 is the total amount in 4 years and 1360 is the total amount in 7 years. We know that the total amount is nothing but principal plus simple interest. So the total amount here for 4 years is 1120. So this 1120 is nothing but the principal amount plus the simple interest of 4 years. And similarly 1360 is nothing but the principal amount plus the simple interest for 7 years. So now we can say that 1120 is equal to principal plus simple interest for 4 years. And 1360 is equal to principal plus simple interest for 7 years. Why? Because total amount is principal plus SI. So this is SI for 4 years in the first case as the time period is 4 years. And it is SI for 7 years in second case as the given time period is 7 years. So this is equation number 1 and equation number 2. Now by finding out the difference of these two equations, that is equation 2 minus equation number 1, we can say that 1360 minus 1120, 1360 minus 1120 should be equal to principal and principal gets cancelled, simple interest of 7 years minus simple interest of 4 years. So now we can very clearly understand that simple interest of 7 years minus simple interest of 4 years is simple interest of 3 years. That is nothing but 7 years interest minus 4 years interest. So we get the interest for 3 years. So simple interest for 3 years is equal to 1360 minus 1120 which is equal to 240 rupees. So very clearly simple interest of 3 years is 240. From this we can say that simple interest of 1 year is equal to 240 divided by 3. Since for 3 years it is 240, for 1 year it should be 1 third of 240 which is equal to 80 rupees. So we can understand that every year the simple interest is 80 rupees. Let us now find out the simple interest for 4 years. If simple interest for 1 year is 80, simple interest for 4 years would be 4 into simple interest of 1 year. That is nothing but 4 into 80 which is equal to 320 rupees. So now we have known what is the simple interest for 4 years. That is equal to 320. So now if we substitute this 320 in the first equation, we get the required principal amount. So we can say that 1120 should be equal to principal amount plus the simple interest of 4 years is 320. So from this the principal is equal to 1120 minus 320 that is equal to 800 rupees. Or otherwise we can find out the simple interest for 7 years and use it in the second equation. So either find it out for 4 years and then take the difference to get the principal or find out the simple interest for 7 years and use it in the second equation to find out the principal. In both the cases answer would be rupees 800. So this is how in a step by step procedure we can find out the principle. In order to avoid the number of steps one point that we can understand here is interest for 3 years or strictly speaking simple interest for 3 years will be equal to 1360 minus 1120. This 1360 is nothing but amount in 7 years the total amount in 7 years and 1120 is the total amount in 4 years. So one point which is very clear is amount of 7 years minus total amount of 4 years is equal to the interest of 3 years. That is nothing but 7 minus 4, 3 years. So if we can remember this point, directly we can start from this step, find out the interest for 1 year and then find it out for 4 years to get the required principle. So just remember that amount for n years, total amount for n years minus total amount for n years would be equal to simple interest of m minus n years. So if we can remember this point, we can cut short the number of steps required in this question. Amount of 10 years minus amount of 4 years will be simple interest of 10 minus 4 that is equal to 6 years. Or amount of 8 years minus amount of 2 years will be equal to simple interest of 8 years minus 2 years 6 years. 
or likewise whatever m or n is given to you you can just subtract that and find out the simple interest for those many years and remember friends this particular point is applicable only in case of simple interest we cannot say that the total amount of m years minus total amount of n years is equal to compound interest of m minus n years why because in case of simple interest the interest remains constant every year so we can directly take the differences of the two amounts and find out the simple interest for the number of years but in case of compound interest the interest increases every year as we have discussed in the introduction part so remember that this particular point is not applicable in case of compound interest but it is applicable only in case of simple interest